1999 Suzuki Bandit 1200 electric conversion. Socheon GTS 35, 20,000 watt motor with a 40,000 watt peak. Under the tank is a ND96 1800 controller, 800 line amps. The battery, a Morge 96 volt, 80 amp hour, 50 PLs, 16P, 26S. And as always, my DKD displays are dead balls accurate, backed up by GPS. I need to back up. I had an ND96 1200 controller in here. Just wasn't putting out the power down low that I liked. Doing the ratios and speed test, I ran into an RPM problem with the testing. So I wanted to get the RPMs lower. So I put a smaller sprocket in the back to bring those RPMs way up higher. So I wasn't even messing with that RPM limit while I was doing my testing. It made the bike significantly slower on takeoff, obviously, and then of course faster on top end. So I knew I wanted to upgrade to a 1800 controller, but I wanted to finish that testing. Let's address the elephant in the room. I called it a 96 1800 controller. I actually bought the ND96 2000 controller. I personally think they're the same darn controller, but maybe with the cooling plate, they're thinking it'll take more phase amps. I'd like to see the person getting all these phase amps out of this thing. I've never got that many, but it's an 800 line amp controller. The new version just says 2000 phase amps as opposed to 1800 phase amps i think it's the same controller i've got this run here with the original sprocket in the back where it's geared to do 100 miles an hour exactly so with the big sprocket and the low gearing it ran like an 8.5 in the eighth and then a 0 to 60 of 4.6 i think i'll put the numbers up here on the screen and then i geared it up and to show how much slower it got I went out and ran a eighth mile again. It was like five point something in the zero to 60 and the eighth mile went up to nine point something. So quite a bit slower. But since I had the tall gearing on here, I went ahead and left it on and put the new controller in so I can test it with the tall gearing and then also test it with the other gearing to see the differences we have. Honestly, right now, it doesn't feel that much different. The 1800 and the 1200, but that's with that tall gearing on there. But that's all just seat of the pants feel. All I've done so far with it is I've taken it down one of my favorite roads. There's a straightaway where I come out of a corner and on the 1200 controller, I was only hitting 102 miles an hour with this new 1800 controller. I'm hitting them about 118 miles an hour. So I do notice a difference up top, but it feels about the same down low. So I'm gonna go and test that. So I wanna go out and do an eighth mile run right now with that little sprocket with the high gearing and see if it's any different than the nine point something eighth mile. Then we'll switch the gearing back to lower and test it against the lower gearing on the 1200. I think it was about the same. And I know in the video it looks like I'm just throwing on a new controller and taking it out. And you guys might think, well, you gotta tune that thing. I've had this controller on here for probably 10 days now. I've been doing constant tuning on it. Thousand runs. You're just seeing one of them. Do every PID setting, every AN setting, phase offsets. I've been through them all. BMS, ratios, all that stuff. What you just see in the video is a very short segment. And there's about 10 days of testing on this new controller. With the high gearing, it's pretty much the same. This is a 400 pound bike. So you're gonna get a lot different results if you're running a smaller bike, like that Mad Dog scooter I had or a moped, thing like a Honda Grom. You're gonna get a, a whole lot better results. I'm on a heavy bike, I'm gonna get poor results. Right now, I would say the 1800 is not worth the upgrade, but we'll get this bike geared back to where it belongs and see if it is a good upgrade. I remembered to recalibrate my speedo this time. I got the big sprocket on, so it was geared lower. But basically it's about the same. And when I say that, I mean for this particular setup, it is GTS 35. So I went from a, I think 4.59 to a 4.38 and a 0.60, a couple of tenths there. I mean, not that big of a deal. And then in the eighth mile, I think it went from 8.55 to 8.29, we'll say 8.30, so yeah, a couple of tenths there too. And that's why I'm saying it's not worth it. I mean, it does go faster, but it's not worth it. So the million dollar question, how did I go from a 1200 controller with 600 line amps to an 800 line amp 1800 controller and not go any faster and how did i go from 
51 kilowatts to 68 kilowatts and not go any faster? Well, the answer is on the graph page. I'm not getting that 68 kilowatts until 7,000 RPM. Below about 6,000 RPM, all the numbers are the same, my amps and RPM. So I've already done the zero to 60 and just about the eighth mile by 7,000 RPM. That's why we're not seeing any difference. Now up top with the little sprocket in the back and the high gearing, I'm seeing uh, over 20 mile an hour difference. So it's making more power. It's going 20 miles an hour faster, but now that I've geared it back down where I want it, I'm speed limited by gearing and RPM to 100 miles an hour. So I've got a bike that I'm not gonna go over 100 miles an hour on, and it's not any quicker, so I ended up with the same results. Yeah, if I were going for top speed, that 1800 controller would be a super big upgrade. But I'm going for a quick bike, and right now it's not a big upgrade until I can figure out how to get more low end torque. In my zero to 60 video, did a lot of that testing for low end torques and found stuff that worked. And I've already got all that in there. When you buy the GTS 35 as a kit, it comes with an ND96-1000 controller. That's actually probably a pretty good match for it, or the 1200. I just don't think this motor can take that much power like that QS268 can. And it's not a complaint. The uh, motor is advertised at 20,000 watts and 40,000 watts peak. As you can see, I peaked at about 65,000 watts on that one so yeah definitely not a complaint and I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments saying a motor can take as much power as you give it it doesn't matter blah 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 I get it I don't I don't disagree with that but I'm just saying so the motor ain't taking it everything's open the Socheon GTS 35 claims to be a hall sensor motor There's the hall sensor from it plugs in your controller it goes down into the motor that plugs into this and this I don't know what the hell that is so this is going to start a whole new video. How to get more low end torque. I see this discussed all over the far driver group, the electric bike build group on Facebook. Everyone's struggling with trying to get a far driver to deliver the amps quicker so the bike is quicker. 